We're only four months into the Mets and Padres experiment of trying to build a super team in MOB. And suffice to say, it hasn't gone as planned. But why? How? Well, the answer to me seems as clear as day. These teams lack organizational depth. Because it's not necessarily about how much money you spend, but how you spread out that money across your 26-man and especially 40-man roster. We've seen it time and time again with teams like the Blue Jays, the Marlins, the Angels, and heck, Prellers, Padres as well. You can surely win the offseason. That doesn't guarantee you're winning much in the regular season. Because baseball isn't the NFL or the NBA, where one or two stars can carry a team in smaller samples. Baseball is totally different because you're playing 162 games almost every single day. And you do something 162 times day in, day out, you're not going to have your A game every single day. You're going to have off days. Some days you'll feel under the weather. You'll have days where nothing goes right and you'll feel like the universe is conspiring against you. And some days you just don't have it. That's human nature. But if you're an MLB organization, you safeguard against those days by building depth. For the Mets, they're spending over $86 million combined annually on two starters in their twilight years. And no one in their projected rotation is under the age of 30. The thing about 30 year olds, especially pitchers, they tend to get hurt a lot. Now Kodai Senga has been a godsend. But he shouldn't have to be that guy for a team that has the number of resources that the Mets do. Their lineup? It's the third oldest in baseball. And on paper coming into the season, you thought it could be pretty formidable. But the games aren't played on paper. When guys get hurt or start underperforming, you need depth from your minors to fill those spots. Either by calling them up or using them as trade bait. And the Mets just don't have that. Similar to the Padres, a team that has tried a 43-year-old Nelson Cruz and 37-year-old Matt Carpenter as their primary designated hitters. Now, the Padres rotation has actually been really good, but this is another team that doesn't have many starting pitching options outside of their five-man rotation. You have to anticipate at least some things not working out. That way, when your lineup is underperforming, outside of Tatis, Soto, and Hasang Him, you don't feel forced to take a flyer on someone like Gary Sanchez, who's already on his third team this season. So are the Mets the Padres of the East? Or are the Padres the Mets of the West? Well, the way I see it, the Mets do have a future. The Padres, it's a little bleaker. For one, the Mets have some semblance of a farm system. Ranked 11 overall by MLB.com this spring. Brett Beatty has been up and down, mostly down, but Francisco Alvarez looks like one of the game's next big sluggers. The Padres, they were ranked 23rd overall, with just two top 100 prospects. Shortstop Jackson Merrill does look like the part of at least a regular big league contributor, but the rest of their top prospects haven't made it above A ball yet, so the jury's still out. Now, you never really know with prospects. In fact, the grand majority of them don't work out. But it's a case of quantity over quality because most big league clubs just haven't consistently figured out the quality part of development. And if you trade away as many prospects as the Padres have, how do you know you're not giving away future valuable major leaguers? To be fair, you can't really fault the Padres for the Juan Soto trade. You build your farm system specifically to get these types of players. The problem is doing it over and over and over and over again. Next, despite all the money thrown around by Steve Cohen, he's actually in a better spot financially. This is the projected luxury tax payroll of the Mets over the next three seasons. And this is the projected payroll for the Padres. A $162 million payroll for the Padres three years out? And that's without Juan Soto or Shohei Otani baked into the equation. I mean, how exactly are you going to build depth and fill around the margins with that high of a projected payroll already? You can't. And that's why I still see the Mets as somewhat competitive three years from now. The Padres? I see them going through another one of their decade-long rebuilds if they stick to this top-heavy front-loaded roster's approach. These two franchises were the talk of the offseason and once again are the talk of the trade deadline and not in a good way. So as a fan, I think you have to ask yourself this one question the next time your team opens up their pocketbooks as extremely as Steve Cohen and Peter Seidler have. 
Is the owner spending because they truly want to win long term? Or are they doing so simply to sell some short term tickets? History suggests it might just be the latter.